Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos we teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between. And this is part 146, painting chibi faces using the quadrant method, a really cool method taught to me by Mark Maxey, a very, very talented chibi painter, as well as he paints everything really well. And basically it's an asymmetrical uh, way of painting faces, assuming, because most ones assume, you know, the, the light source is in front. This is actually assuming the light source is to the side, and I'm going to do a very subtle one today, but you can go as extreme as you wish. So we'll start off, of course, by priming the model white, since I'm using light colors today. And now it's time to just show you the quadrant method. So essentially you're going to divide the face into four quadrants, right, along each side, and uh, about halfway through, which I like to divide the cheeks, basically. And what we're going to do is the cheeks, uh, anything below the halfway mark downward is going to be darker, and then the upward will be lighter. And then we're going to choose a light source side. I'm going to choose, in this case, uh, my right hand side. And we're going to work, so the left hand side of the face, basically, of the miniature. And we're going to build it up on that side a little bit more than the other one. So there will be three, essentially three different colors. The, the ones on the lower half are going to be darker. The ones on the left hand side are, the, the one on the, um, the top left hand side will be significantly lighter. But the one on the top right hand side that I'll be painting will be the lightest because the light source will be to that side. So after, so it start, we'll start off as normal. I'm going to start with chestnut brown. And with all my colors today, I'm going to heavily thin them down with Lamia medium. That way they're nice and thin, they go on nice, they don't obscure any details, and they're going to be blended in quite nicely. So you're going to see the, the approach to this miniature is going to be very similar to the approach from the last miniature until the end, which as I said, I'm going to, um, which is just a way, another way of looking at, the, at this paint job. See, and most paint jobs assume a, like a central, fixed light source, and that's why you work your way towards it. For example, the lightness of the cheeks and the top of the nose, and this one is slightly different. And it actually creates a little more interesting of an appearance, I find. I do it with some of my miniatures. I've been working on this off and on, just practicing, and uh, it's fun. It produces, you know, just slight variants and shows that maybe it's not a, just a uniform light source. So as always, I'm just using chestnut brown to create a nice foundation for the skin tones, taking my time, getting a nice coat all over the face. Now this miniature, you'll see at the very end, I intentionally painted in the eyebrows and the hair at the end, just to show you, because this miniature has giant eyebrows, and it'll end up, um, while I'm painting it, you're going to notice that it, it looks a little odd when I'm doing the, the tutorial. Once you see the eyebrows then, you'll understand why I, I took the lines that I did. Because, um, yeah, it, it just has giant bushy eyebrows, and, and once they're filled in, it'll make more sense. So, chestnut brown's done. Now I'm going to take Fair Shadow once again. The same three colors from Reaper that I used in the last video, but I'm going to use a different approach. So this one, once again, um, I'm going to build up the colors all around the face, leaving the chestnut brown only in the deep recesses and the areas facing vertically. Um, this first step is, is, is a very similar in appearance to um, my normal approach with the paint job. But as you can see now, I'm just going to leave it in the recesses and build up the, the, the skin tones elsewhere. And then once again, I'm going to choose the quadrant method. So anywhere, um, it's basically dividing the face in, in, a, in a, just a, you know, four equal parts, but I like to divide it in the cheeks. So the area below the cheeks will be almost this tone. This is going to be almost the final tone of the of the area beneath the cheeks. And then I'm going to build up the, the top half of the face, which is just the area above the cheeks, the eyes, the eyebrows, uh, the area around the eyebrows, the ears. And, um, and then I'm going to choose a side. In this case, I'll choose the right hand side and then build that part up even more. And this is an interesting way of taking approaching to miniatures. And it makes sense, right? The, um, if the light source is, is at one area, you can divide the area among faces and each area would be differently affected and uh, would have a different uh, tone to the end. And this is actually quite a much more interesting appearance as I thought. And so now, as I said, I'll add a little bit more fair shadow and repeat this process. So now, I'm, as you can see, I'm going to focus on the areas above that central line of the face. So I'm going to leave the area below the cheeks a little bit darker and the area on the left, bottom part of the ear is a little bit darker and the deep recess is darker, and then build up the top half of the face now. So the ridge of the nose, tops of the cheeks, the area around the eyebrows, etc. Now I'm just going to take Fair Shadow, repeat this process, and this will be the, um, as I said, I'm building up the cheekbones, the nose, and I'm, I'm going to build it up just slightly you know, brighter, focusing more upwards on the miniature. 
But this is the point where I will start to differentiate. As you can notice, I'm gonna focus a little bit more on, on as you can see, around the cheekbones here, but I'm gonna start to focus a little bit more on the other half of the miniature. So do a little, a couple more extra steps, you know, a little more to keep it a little bit brighter on the, on the one half the side of the nose, that cheekbone, that ear, and it, it's gonna become a little bit brighter as we go on. And I'm gonna take Fair Highlight and mix it in as well. And I'm gonna do just a mix of Fair Shadow and Fair Highlight along the spectrum of it. Um, and this is the point where, it, this is the last color I'm going to use. Now you could go all the way up to Fair Highlight then and continue on this process and make it even brighter of a light, of a discrepancy between the sides. But um, I just wanted to keep it a little more subtle, but you're gonna definitely be able to see the difference in the sides of the faces. So now we're just gonna build up once again the cheekbones. And this will blend in darker. Like as you see, I use very thin paints and they do blend in quite nicer when they're, when they're dry. But uh, when you first apply them, like, oh wow, that's really, really bright. And uh, they do blend in a lot nicer. So the top of the cheeks, top of the nose. And then I will uh, repeat this process. Um, with the next shade, I'm going to almost solely focus on the one half of the miniature, the, the top right hand side of the miniature, so the, the miniature's left side of his face. is just take your time up nice thin layers and work accordingly once you it's funny because you can mix up the quadrants you can do various things with these and it's just a really interesting way of approaching this um, technique uh, of your chibi faces in general I was, I was taught this by a really awesome uh, chibi miniature painter named Mark Maxi he's a really really talented a painter in general but he paints chibis almost primarily and he's amazing so you know for this step as you can see I'm just doing the left that one side, the left hand side of his face, or my right hand side, and I'm just going to focus on that cheekbone, making it slightly brighter than the other side, and the top towards the head, ever lighter, that side of the nose. See, I'm just doing this last step and applying it just towards that one side of the face to make it just, I like to, I like to have my thing a little more subtle. I know some people have it a little more brighter, but I'm going to focus on that one side of the face. Now this is going to be where the light source is hitting down on that top right hand side of of the screen so that's where I'm pretending and that's where I'm going to focus on so now that one side is slightly brighter than the other and I'm just going to build it up just a little bit brighter have some subtleties and as you can see that once you, you I fill in the eyebrows it'll make a little more sense why I'm avoiding those areas because he has giant bushy eyebrows there you go so it's even more subtle. And now you can see there's a cl clearly a light source to that side versus the other one. And now, just add a little bit more shading. Uh, this is another tip that Mark gave me. But um, I'm gonna really, really heavily thin down chestnut brown, going back to the original color. And I'm going to, as a very, very, almost like a glaze, and I'm just gonna apply it along the other side. And just along the very edges of the other side, along the bottom of the head, uh, along the face, and the, the side of the face almost where the hair meets the skin, just a little bit of it to create uh, the slightest shadow. And that way it'll even emphasize this even more. So one side will be slightly darker, and then you add this extra layer of shadowing along the other side, and it makes it creates an even better effect. So as you see now, there's a very strong, there's an even better difference between the faces. And that's it. So that is the quadrant method taught to me by Mark Maxey. Not only is he an amazing chibi miniature painter, but he paints pretty much everything amazing. I just, I've known him primarily through chibis because he's an awesome painter. So as you can see here, the lower half of the base clearly is darker than the top half, and the one side is even lighter than the other side. And that is said, it's mimicking a, an asymmetrical light source. And I really like this style of painting chibi faces. So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned a bit about painting chibi faces. Stay tuned for next week's episode, part 147, which is just around the corner. Leave comments in the comment section down below what we want to see in future videos. I'll do my best to make sure every suggestion happens. So thank you as always for subscribing. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.